My name is Matthew Buffington. I'm with the Systematic Entomology Lab, USDA, within the Smithsonian Institution. The Systematic Entomology Lab is one of the many affiliated agencies within the museum. And we work together with Smithsonian facilities and staff to curate the national collection of insects. My main research focuses on a group of parasitic wasps within the order Hymenoptera, uh, relatives of the bees and ants. Uh, the wasps I study are endoparasites of other animals, other insect species, eating them from the inside out. And USDA is interested in research on these wasps because we can often use them to combat pestiferous insects in natural and agricultural ecosystems. Uh, one of the challenges to that task, however, is we have a massive taxonomic impediment ahead of us. We have names for maybe 5% of the world diversity of these parasitic wasps. They tend to be very small, on the order of 1 to 2 millimeters on average. And they're essentially a living, breathing creature that is invisible to the human experience. Our research here focuses just on collecting these all over the world, um, curating them, mounting them, labeling them. And once we're done examining often thousands of specimens when we're working on a particular species trying to determine how to identify it better, we need to illustrate that specimen. We, in modern uh, uh, scientific journals, we can publish lots of color images, and there's a lot of stuff going online these days with things like the Encyclopedia of Life. Uh, we have been developing photographic techniques here in the laboratory for photographing extremely small wasps and doing it in a very efficient way. So what I'd like to illustrate for you now is the first system that we started using here. Uh, it's called an uh, Intovision system. And one of the problems facing scientific photography, any type of photographic process, we're using lenses and light as the source of uh, data coming into the lens is one of depth of field, where you can only get a certain part of your subject in focus at any one time. And this could affect if you're photographing a bowling ball, a sperm whale, or a really small wasp, that the same problem is always plaguing you, that you can't get the whole subject in focus at one time. One of the ways we've combated this and kind of created like a, a very cool solution to this is to actually take a series of focal planes through the subject and using a computer algorithm collapse all of the in-focus pieces of each of those focal planes into one composite image. It's not technically a real image because it's physically impossible to obtain such a thing. So we, it's more or less a virtual image. But for the purposes of illustrating what an insect looks like, what its color is, um, kind of how the wings are relative to the length of the legs, those sorts of things, what we call a habitus image, the technology is superbly suited for that task. So what I'd like to do is show you what I've done here. I've, I've got a very small wasp underneath the microscope here. This is an illumination dome. We we're actually showering the specimen in a cloud of photons produced by 48 high-intensity LEDs inside here. This is the camera here, and this is what we call a Z-stepper focusing rig. And that allows us to mechanically, or using this control knob here, actually it can focus back and forth through the specimen. What I've done here before filming began is took a series of focal planes through this little wasp. Looks like we've got nine of them, starting from its left flank through its midline to its right flank. And what I'm going to do is ask the computer to take those series of focal planes and figure out in each image what's in focus, what's not. What is not in focus gets discarded. What is in focus is retained, and that's done uh, recursively through the stack, as we call it, and we're going to produce a composite image. So it's pretty fast. These images are about five megabytes each. This is our composite image. And this is the result. This wasp is about two millimeters long. It looks like any other wasp that you might encounter, yellow jackets, etc., except it's just tiny. And it happens to be a, a parasite of another wasp species that lives inside of mimosa plants in the desert southwest. Now, if we look at the original image, this is a real-time video right now of the specimen, and I'm going to focus through it. 
I hope the camera can pick this up. But you can see as I focus through this, I can't get the whole wasp in focus at the same time. But my composite image does get it in focus all at the same time. This has been a revolution in how we photograph insects and how to use those photographs for scientific illustration. It's very cheap, it's very fast, we don't use any film, it's just hard drive space. It's taken us a long time to get to this point. We've invested an enormous amount of man hours trying to figure out how to do this. But now that it's working, it's, it's incredible. It's revolutionizing exactly how we discover species and then disseminate that data to other scientists and the general public.